Okay, so we're going to talk about dilations, which is a third form of transformations. Okay, so we've already talked about rotating and translating. Uh, I'm sorry, it's our fourth form because we also talked about, um, besides rotating and translating, we talked about reflecting. So this is our fourth and final type of transformation. So this is the type that, again, if you're thinking about like something like a Google map, when you zoom in and zoom out on the Google map, all of the shapes on that map get really big or really small, depending on whether you're, how far you're zooming in or how far you're zooming out. Right? So that's really what a dilation is. That's what we're referring to when we do that zoom in and zoom out, is that we're taking the size of the object and we're changing it, but we're not actually changing the shape at all. Okay? So how big or how small that object gets is called the scale factor. And we usually use this letter K that rep to represent the scale factor. So if you see K showing up, they're actually trying to represent with a number how much bigger or how much smaller your object is getting. Right? So if you can see an example. You've probably heard if you've ever been to the eye doctor about dilating your pupils. They're actually trying to take the size of your pupils and make them larger so they can see inside. Right? And so that's really a, a kind of a common example of it. Okay? So when we, we decide to make the graph or sorry, the, the shape larger, we call that an enlargement, okay? Um, and that always happens when the scale factor, which again is just a number that represents how big or how small it's getting, when that number is bigger than one, okay, the graph is gonna get larger, okay? If it's exactly equal to one, our K value, then the, then the shape is gonna stay the same, it's not gonna get bigger or smaller, that's our neutral scale factor. Okay. And then if it gets smaller, which means it's a number between 0 and 1, right? 0 and 1 is just fractions and decimals, right? things like a half or 0.25 or 1 tenth. Those kinds of numbers, when they're our k values, they will cause the, the shape to get smaller in size. Right? So we're only going to deal with positive k values. You won't ever see negative k values. Uh, that would do some other stuff. So we're going to say you know, negative numbers are not smaller. We're just going to stick with positive k values. So the smallest numbers that we're going to get are going to be like fractions like one tenth or one one hundredth or one one thousandth. And those will make the graph get smaller and smaller and smaller, okay, as we go along, right? So here's a simple uh, problem using uh, dilations, right? So first of all, if you notice, we have this notation, right, where it looks like what we're doing when we're transforming a point using dilations is we are using multiplication okay, on the x and the y value. So if I have an original x and y value, which remember this is what's called the pre-image, if my pre-image has this point x comma y, and I decide I want to dilate that point, which means make it bigger or smaller, make the shape that contains x and y bigger or smaller, okay, I'm going to multiply the x value and the y value by k, which in this case we chose a k of two thirds, right? So we're going to actually say, let's make it two thirds the size, right? So there's a couple things that we know are going on here. We're going to say, okay, two thirds, well, that's a value smaller than one. So since it's smaller than one, I know that my shape is going to get smaller, right? So, uh, and we can actually figure out where exactly xy is going to go uh, after this dilation by a factor of two thirds, okay? So here's one catch to this. When we're doing this multiplying, this very simple algorithm, multiplying by the scale factor, in this case multiplying by this k value of two thirds, this assumes, okay, that we're uh, dilating where the dilation point, okay, which is sometimes referred to as the center of dilation, when the center of dilation, okay, is at the origin, okay? So if we're going to use this very simple strategy of just multiplying the k value by the x and multiplying the k value by the y, we're assuming that the center of dilation is at the origin. Right? So here's a simple example. If we wanted to dilate the point 9 comma 0 by a factor of k value of 2 thirds, right? We're going to so this would be like zooming out on our Google map, right? We would actually do 2 thirds of 9. Well, 2 thirds of 9 is just 6. Okay, and if I did two thirds of zero, well, anything times zero, okay, is zero. So I know that the point nine comma zero is going to go to the point six comma zero. I can do that for any other point. So if I did negative twelve times two thirds, if you're not sure about how to do that uh, without a calculator, remember multiplying a whole number times a fraction looks like this. I just say this is negative twenty-four on the top over three on the bottom. Well, negative twenty-four over three is negative eight, right? And I can do the same thing with negative 3 over 1 times 2 thirds. Okay, well this looks like negative 6 on the top divided by 3 on the bottom. Well negative 6 over 3, I'm sorry, it's positive 6 over 3. Let me just fix that, get rid of this little negative sign there. Okay, this is positive 6 over 3 
okay, which is 2, right? So I would say that the point negative 12, comma 3 becomes the point negative 8, comma 2 after a dilation from the center at the origin of 2 thirds, okay? So we can do that for any number of problems. So if I take a look at this one, it's very similar, okay? I'm going to graph the point that they asked me to, okay, this A, B, and C. So negative 1 up to 4, okay, is right here. This is A, okay? This B is at 0, negative 4. 1, 2, 3, 4 down. There's my B, okay? And C is over at 2, comma, 1, 2, 3. That would be right here, right? And so I can connect together my shape Okay, because I'm so bad at drawing lines, I'm just going to use my line tool to connect together these three points, A, B, C. Okay. And now they're wondering, well, if I decide that I, I'm going to use my center of dilation at the origin, so that's good, I can use my algorithm. And they're saying by a factor of 2. What that means is I'm going to take all my x and my y values, and I'm going to multiply them by 2. So I'm going to do 2 times negative 1, and A prime becomes negative 2. I'm going to do 4 times that, that scale factor, and it's going to become 8. And I'm going to do that for each of my points. So B becomes 0, negative 8. Okay? And C becomes, if I multiply both of these by 2, it becomes 4 and 6. So let's put that on our graph. I'm going to use a different color. We'll use red to represent the scale factor of 2, okay? which I'll put a little check mark here so we remember. So I'm going to go to the same thing. I'm going to multiply these. I'm going to graph my new points. So negative 2 up to 8. That's here. That's my A prime. Okay, 0 down to negative 8, which would be way down here. That's B prime. Okay, and I'm going to go two, uh, over 2, I'm sorry, over 4, and up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. That would be right here. That's C prime. Okay, and I'm going to just connect those ones together. And again, let's use a different color. We'll call this one red. All right, so if I draw this one, A to B, B to C, C back to A, if you notice, this is an exact, the exact same size, the exact same shape, I'm sorry, it's not the exact same size, it's double the size, but the exact same shape and the exact same orientation as my original problem, okay? I could do this exact same thing with uh, my scale factor of one half, so let's see what that looks like. I'm going to take each of these points and I'm going to cut them in half. So this is now negative one half, two, Okay, B becomes 0 because a half times 0 is still 0. And if I cut this in half, I get negative 2. And my C is going to become 1, 3 halves. Okay. And so let's graph this one. And so I'm going to use again a different color. I'll use green. So if I go over to negative 1 half and up to 2, that would be right here. This is my new A prime. Okay. And if I go 0 down to negative 2, that would put me right here. This is my new B prime. Well, we'll call it double prime to be consistent. Right? And if I go over to 1 and up to 3 halves, which remember 3 halves is 1 and a half, that would be right here. That would be my C double prime. Okay? And let's put these together using a green line, again, so we can kind of try to keep them all separated. Right? So I'm going to go from A to C, from C to B, and B back to A. So you can see, again, it's just a mini, a smaller version, right, that the scale factor of 1 half took my original ABC, and it shrunk it down by a factor of 1 half. It's half the size, but it's still the same uh, shape, still that triangle, and it's still the same orientation. It's pointing down. Right? But all we did is we, we took its size and we decreased it by exactly a factor of one half.